guys, my name is Angela Sirigvanu. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be doing a video on birth plans. What exactly is a birth plan? Do you really need one? What do you put on a birth plan? And what do you do with it? Before we start, go ahead and click that subscribe button below, give it a like, and once you've done that, let's get on with the video. So if you are pregnant or plan on being pregnant or have been in the past, then I'm sure somewhere along the line, you have heard of a birth plan. When I was pregnant, that was the first time that I had ever heard about one and I was not really sure what they were. So the more I looked into it, the more I realized that a birth plan is more of a birth preference. When you go into making your birth plan, go in with an open mind and be flexible. Look at it more as a birth preference, things that you would like to happen, but things that you will also be okay with your birth plan or birth preferences not going exactly how you intended them to. You can write your birth plan either in just a normal notebook, just a normal page, or there are some awesome templates online. I will actually link a few of my favorites in the description below, so definitely check that out. I personally think that a template is just very easy and just keeps everything nicely organized, so I would suggest using a template. For me, when I was pregnant, I didn't, so I just ended up writing my birth plan in a notebook but for future, I will definitely use a template. You want to keep it simple, one page at the most. You don't want to go into the hospital laboring and you don't want to hand your doctor or hand your nurse a binder of a birth plan. You don't want a second page. You just want to keep it clear and concise, something that you hand to them. They quickly look over. Okay, okay, yep, I understand what you would like for your birth. Everything is nicely organized and put together and very easy for them to read. Number one, you want to include your pain management. How do you want to go about dealing with pain? Do you want an epidural? Are you okay with possibly getting an epidural? Do you absolutely want to try your best to not have one? Or are you a little bit on the fence about it, maybe. May want to try my best to labor as much as possible without an epidural, but if I feel like I absolutely need one, then I'm okay with being offered one. So you want to specifically list that on your birth plan. There are also other methods of pain management. Would you prefer something like laughing gas? This is a big, big one. This is probably one of the biggest things to include in your birth plan because if you opt out of an epidural and you want to go as natural and as unmedicated as possible, this is crucial, very, very important for your nurse to know because they need to know to not push things on you. They need to know what your boundaries are when it comes to medication. And if you are going unmedicated, then they need to work with you on how to help you manage the pain and get through those contractions. So that may be helping you sit and labor in different positions, get your support team to help you in different ways. There are just so many things that factor into when you aren't getting an epidural. Next is your support team. Who is going to be with you during labor? Who are they? Are they your mom? Are they your aunt? Are they your partner? And what are their names? Your nurse will most likely want to address your support team by their names. It's just easier, it's more respectful, and it will just make things so much more smoother for you during your labor. With your support team, I would highly suggest designating a specific person to being your advocate during labor. Oftentimes during labor and delivery, you are so focused on just doing your thing and getting baby out and making sure that you are okay and baby is okay, that sometimes there's just so much going on and you may not be in the right headspace to advocate and speak for yourself. So it's really important for your support team 
to know about your birth plan, to know specifically what you would like and what you would like to avoid. So that just in case, if you are not able to speak up for yourself because you are just so focused on laboring, then your support person will be able to speak on your behalf and say, whoa, 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 hold on a second. This is on her birth plan. She does not want X, Y, and Z. If your partner is going with you, give them a rundown of your birth plan, sit down with them and explain everything to them. Make sure that they are on the same page as you so that they may be able to speak up for you. Next up is what are your preferences for labor? What does your ideal or what does your dream labor look like? It may be difficult to find out what is the perfect labor, like what things should I be wanting? What things can be helpful? And those are ideas that you may want to look separately online. Just search different ways to labor and different things that can help labor and make it more comfortable. Some ideas that you can use are would you like to labor in water? Do you want to somehow have water? Whether that be a birthing pool or just being under the shower, you want to really make that known. And you want to make this known to your doctor, to your OB or your midwife before you go into labor because you really want to make sure that the hospital or the facility that you are going to labor in that they are going to accommodate your preferred birth. So if you really want to have a water birth and then you get to the hospital and then you realize that they don't accommodate that, that you won't be able to have anything with water, then that is really going to set you back and disappoint you. That is probably going to change your entire birthing plan and your vision for your birth. Make sure that your OB or your midwife are on the same team as you, that they understand exactly what you want and that they're willing to get that done for you. Would you like music playing? Would you like the lights in the room to be dimmed and to set a specific calming, relaxing mood? Some moms like to bring a diffuser with essential oils and make the room smell nice, make it smell a certain way. Are you hoping to labor in specific positions? Generally speaking, hospitals want you to labor laying down on your back. So if you don't want to do that, you need to make that known on your birthing plan. My next point is medical interventions. Which medical interventions are you okay with and which ones are you looking to avoid? Are you okay with IV? That is something that not a lot of people speak about, especially if you are fearful of needles which is me. I feel like majority of people are afraid of needles. The IV is actually something that not a lot of women may know that you don't absolutely need it unless a complication happens and they need to get something in you, get some medication in you or Pitocin or something like that. Then obviously you do need the IV, but if everything is running smoothly and even before labor throughout your pregnancy, if you have a generally good pregnancy, easy, no complications, you most likely don't need an IV. Are you okay with the doctors using the vacuum method to help baby come out. How do you feel about baby monitoring? Usually while you are in labor, the nurses will place a monitor around your belly so they can be able to monitor baby, monitor their heartbeat, and monitor your contractions and see how everything is moving along. If you do have that, they want you to typically stay laying in bed. And this goes back to the positions that you would like. If you would like to labor in different positions, if you want to move around, you want to be able to get up and walk, then you want to specifically mention that in your birth plan that most likely you want to come away from baby monitoring. Or perhaps you want to use it here and there, but you don't want to have it on you the entire time. Are you okay with cervical checks, membrane sweeps, Cervical checks happen very frequently in hospitals, so that is definitely something you want to think about. Typically, the nurse can come in like every half an hour, every hour and check you. Each time that the nurse checks you and sees how much you are dilated, that can just bring more stress to you. For some women, it actually slows down their labor. So you wanna think about that and see how important is it to you 
to continuously know how much you are dilated. Are there complications in your pregnancy where it is important to know? So that is also something you want to consider. Do you want the nurses to break your water for you if you get there and your water hasn't broken yet? These are things that they will offer to you. Sometimes, unfortunately, I have heard stories of nurses not offering and not saying or explaining what they are doing and procedures are done and the moms find out later on that something was done without their consent. So this is why also birth plans are so, so helpful. You are able to reject these things. You can say no to cervical checks and membrane sweeps. So that is something that you definitely want to think about. This may not be something that you have heard of. They may say, oh, this is standard procedure or this is routine at the hospital, but it is not mandatory. At the end of the day, it is your body. It is your baby. It is your labor and delivery. So they are there to support you and help you through it but you are the main person to make decisions. My next point is newborn preferences. So this is after baby is born, what would you like to have happen? Would you like skin to skin right away? Would you like skin to skin also for your partner? What about your placenta? There are many things that you can do with it nowadays. This is something that has quickly become popular. So I know there are cultural things that people can do with placentas. Some hospitals have like a donation system where you can donate your placenta and they use it for like stem cell research. Or do you not care and you're not worried about that or you don't even want to bother with it and you're just like, okay you know what, get rid of my placenta. What about the cord blood? This is also something that has become very, very popular lately. And cord blood has a lot of great things in it. A lot of parents are opting now to save the cord blood and I think they like freeze it and you can use it down the road years later. So that is up to you what you would like to do. You can list that on your birth plan. And also, what about cutting the umbilical cord? Do you want them to cut it right away or do you want them to wait a bit? Usually a lot of women like to wait 20 minutes, half an hour until you see that the umbilical cord stops pumping the blood. So you want to get that blood between you and baby. You need to make that known because if you don't, then they are just going to go through the standard procedure, which is baby comes out, maybe get like a couple minutes and then they snip. Are you consenting to medical interventions to be done on your baby as soon as they are born? So typically speaking, are you consenting to the vitamin K shot and the eye ointment? If you are not consenting to those, you may have a backup plan. I know that there are oral vitamin K drops. Some hospitals do offer a different type of vitamin K shot that have different ingredients in them without specific preservatives. So that is also something you want to look into. Have your backup plan ready. Would you like to delay the newborn bath? A lot of newborns are born with this white substance on their skin and usually people think that it's dirty and they want to quickly clean baby and get them nice and fresh but actually that vernix is there for a reason it acts like a natural moisturizer so it's actually very very good for baby's skin so do you want to keep that on them do you want to delay cleaning them add that on your birth plan last but not least i want to talk about feeding preferences are you going to breastfeed? Are you going to formula feed? Are you going to do combo feeding? If you are choosing to breastfeed and specifically exclusively breastfeeding, then that is definitely something that you want to make known because you don't want formula to be somehow introduced if something is going wrong with baby. Sometimes babies do have complications and they do need formula, which is what happened with our son and that is also something that you need to be okay with. I wanted to exclusively breastfeed. That was part of my birthing plan. That was my vision, my dream. And quickly after birth, things changed and I had to be okay with it. I had to stay with an open mind. So our son, when he was born, he was born a little bit on the smaller side. He was six pounds 10 ounces. I did give birth at 40 weeks and two days. They said that his 
sugar levels were a little low, but he was also having a very hard time latching. I was having a difficult time breastfeeding him in the beginning because I really feel like his mouth was a little small. So he was having some difficulty trying to latch which then in turn, he wasn't getting enough milk. I truly believe that is why his sugar levels were low. Because of that, we had to give him formula a little bit at the hospital to get his sugar levels up so that they would be comfortable with discharging us and sending us home. So things like that are a possibility for many moms. It's something you wanna be okay with. Don't let that discourage you from continuing to breastfeed. I still continued. So just because baby may be introduced with formula, it doesn't mean that you need to stick with it. It doesn't mean that you need to continue with just formula or combo. If you want to breastfeed, you can continue to breastfeed. And that brings me to my next point, which is if you want to breastfeed, then make sure that if you are doing combo or if formula somehow gets introduced at the hospital that you want to keep removing your milk, whether that be with a haka or a pump or continuing to try to get baby to latch, continue removing milk because if you don't, that is going to have a big problem with your milk supply. It's going to impact your supply. So keep your supply up, keep your supply strong by continuing to remove your milk. Would you like help with breastfeeding? That is something your nurses definitely need to know. Your nurses are there to help you learn how to properly breastfeed and see what is wrong with baby. Is it you? Is it them? What can you do differently to have a successful breastfeeding journey? And also you may want to request to have a visit from a lactation consultant. Usually a lactation consultant from the hospital will come to the room and visit you. And they will better walk you through properly how to breastfeed. And then from there, they often help you schedule an appointment so you can come back if you would like and have one on one time with lactation consultants to further assist your breastfeeding journey. So those are my top suggestions for what to include in your birth plan or birth preferences. I hope that these were helpful. You can find so much more online if you are thinking about different ideas. Definitely do your research and find what birth plan or birth preference works for you the best. I really hope that these ideas kind of gave you a better idea of what your dream birth may look like and what you would like to include. I personally used many of these, if not majority of them. Having these in mind really helped me to envision my birth and helped me to actually be prepared for birth because you don't wanna go in blindsided and not knowing anything because if you go into the hospital on the day of your labor and you're just kind of going with the flow and letting the nurses and doctors just do every standard procedure you may have things done to you that you would have liked to avoid and you may not have the best birthing experience your birth needs to be tailored to you and no one else can get that done for you except for yourself don't forget to check out the description below and I will link some awesome templates for you guys. I hope your labor and delivery is a wonderful, beautiful experience that you will look back on and be so happy and proud of. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.